Welcome to Lush One Synthesizer Module 102. You should have created some pretty interesting but still fairly basic sounds in Module 101. We're going to enrich that palette of sounds quite considerably in this module by adding in some new capabilities. So I want to talk about the new capabilities by looking at the computer animated block diagram first. So far we've used Oscillator 1 as a direct input to the filter and today we're going to use two new features. We're going to use the control voltage inputs and these are additional voltages which modify the filter behavior. Um, and we're going to use the second oscillator, oscillator 2, uh, to drive those. And oscillator 2 is normally configured as what's called a low frequency oscillator or LFO which means it plays a frequency which is too low to be a normal musical note but is good for modifying or modulating the sound coming out of oscillator 1. And we're just going to add in one new patch lead from oscillator 2 output all the way through to control voltage 1 input on the filter. Now we could have used two, they're identical, but just for convenience we're going to use one in this example. So here's the board, I'm just going to cycle the power just to make sure it goes back onto the, back into the startup state. And we're going to add the second patch in which is going to join the output of oscillator 2 into the first control voltage input CV1 on the filter. So here's the patch lead, here's the output of oscillator 1 and we're going into CV1. This knob here right next to CV1 is the gain control for the control voltage and similarly here is CV2 and here's the gain control for CV2. So with the patch in place we can now start to use the output of oscillator 2 to modulate the, uh, the cutoff frequency of the filter. So to get things started we just want to set the cutoff frequency in the master control into the middle um, just so we hear a bit of effect from the notes. So let's just make sure we've got something going there. Yeah, sounds good. Um, you can turn the resonance control up here if you want, but to start off with I suggest you just keep it down low uh, so you can really hear the effect of the LFO modulation. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to hold a note and we'll turn up this LFO gain until we start to hear some effects. So what you're hearing there is the signal coming out the LFO being added to the level of the cutoff we set with the master control. And obviously the more you turn this gain up, uh, the more effect is added in by the, uh, by the LFO. Uh, one thing to notice here, so actually it's kind of interesting, just put this in the middle, we'll hear how, we, how the cutoff changes this, the effect as well. So. So as you heard there, if you set the cutoff too high or too low, there's really no effect due to the LFO because uh, the two things added together is always kind of either above or below uh, the useful range. But with the uh, master control in the middle, then this has a very noticeable effect. Additional control is very useful here. If you have a modulation wheel on the keyboard, that controls the rate of the LFO. So I'm just going to hold a note and use the modulation wheel. You can hear very clearly there the sort of high and low extremes of the range of the LFO. As well as having the wave shape control for the main oscillator, we have a similar control for the LFO on the second button and we have the, the same five wave shapes. One thing that's different here is the difference between saw and ramp is very 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 obvious at the low frequency oscillator. So here's a rising saw wave. And here's a falling ramp wave. 
Um, and you also have other ways, you've got square for example. Um, let's just kind of just quickly set that back onto saw. We'll just use some resonance as well just to give you a kind of range of the, the sounds that's possible here. Well, there you go, some great kind of bubbling electronics coming out of that. Um, one thing you hear very clearly is we, we saw in the first module that the resonance tracks the master cutoff. When you're adding in some LFO from the, from the CV in, then that also uh, affects the resonance frequency, as you heard in some of that. One additional control for the second oscillator is the third button here, which sets the oscillator mode. And there are three low frequency modes and one additional mode. The default mode is called norm for normal and the characteristics of this mode are that the oscillator is always reset at the start of a note and the oscillator is turned off when the MIDI note is released. So we set these back to something relatively sensible. Um, if I play some notes here, I'll just turn that frequency down. <laughs> Here the note always starts the same, it repeats, the LFO repeats if I, if I hold the note down, but nothing happens when I release the note. Um, the main contrast to that is the first setting, which is continuous mode, and in this mode the LFO is always on and there's no reset when you play a note. So if I just play some notes staccato, you'll hear that we hear the oscillator, the LFO, in different positions and you get different sounds on each note start. So hopefully you hear there that sometimes the note comes in in the middle of the oscillator cycle. And I think this continuous mode is probably most useful if you're using some kind of external envelope shaper as an external module on the Lush one. Uh, the other thing to note about continuous mode is uh, if we just turn the resonance up because this oscillator is still running you'll hear the sweep of the oscillator in the self resonance of the, uh, of the filter. Um, the last low frequency mode is called once and in this mode the oscillator, the low frequency oscillator, just goes through one cycle which starts when you play a note. And you can use this as a kind of Poorman's uh, way of doing frequency shaping on the notes. So you hear there how the use of the once swing allows you to sort of give the start of the note a little bit of more texture than it would have would have normally. The fourth mode is called OSC and in that mode oscillator 2 doesn't act as an LFO, it acts as a second high frequency oscillator. Uh, and that's really useful for more specialist effects when you're using uh, other external circuits in, in association with the Lush One. So I think we've covered now really all the key features of the LFO, which is normally OSC2. We have the output here and you'd normally want to connect that into a control voltage input for the filter, but we can also connect it to some other things as we'll see in the next module. Associated with the control voltage input, we have a gain control and perhaps it's worth noting that these inputs are identical so you can use either input and use the associated gain control. Um, I think we've seen how we can change the shape of that oscillator 
and we've gone through the different modes associated with that. And by now you're starting to get a pretty complete palette of the sounds available built in on the Lush One. So really I encourage you to play around, use the mode settings that we've been through, use the controls here and also use the modulation wheel and the pitch bend on the keyboard uh, to fiddle around with things. In the next module what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some other things you can do with the LFO and we're also going to look at how we make the uh, response of the filter track the note that you're playing on the keyboard to get more consistent sounds when you're playing uh, across a range of notes. <laughs>